Are you ready to have your mind blown? Because we're talking about brain infecting funguses that turn ants into zombies in the popular show, The Last Among Us, in which this brain infecting fungus creates a post apocalyptic utopian society, which I was just introduced to. Freaked me out when I watched the first episode. So stay right there. Don't go anywhere. We're going to talk about brain infecting funguses, zombies, and post apocalyptic worlds tonight with me and my good friend, Norty. Be right back. And we're live! All right. Josh, welcome to another show. It's Wednesday night. We're doing what we do. What's new? What's cooking? What's uh, what's going on in your life? Not much is new on my end. Just Are you a zombie? I'm not a zombie yet, but this should oh, be a yeah. fun topic. Although, yeah, although yeah. I, I, many of us probably feel like zombies. I think with with the rate that things are crashing out of the sky and being shot down and trains being true. derailed, we are all going to be zombies sooner rather than okay. later. I forget zombies. What's with all the things getting shot out of the sky? I mean, I are know? we like are we about to go into go to war with like China or something? Is that like I, a real a real possibility? What's going about to happen? I am so isolated from anything pop culture, unless it's sports or not even pop, pop culture. culture. I don't know why I said that. This is news. Like oh, news, pop culture. I, 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 hey, you heard it here first. China invaded the United States as pop, pop culture. culture. You know what I meant. But news, anything, literally anything. I'm so isolated. I live in my bubble of sports, wrestling, and work. And if I don't hear about it on one of the podcasts I'm listening to, like I have no idea. So when once it breaks that what circle, what you're saying is when China I know invades the United States, I need to make a podcast about it so that you can get the latest updates on the Chinese invasion. If it's not on Pat McAfee show or Pardon My Take, like there's a good chance I will not hear about it. All right, until somebody's knocking down your door, putting yeah. a muzzle in your face. Yeah. And even then, I'll be like, "What is this a joke? What's happening? Is it Halloween? What day you is it?" You stand no chance in a war, my friend. <laughs> Zero chance. I'm going on stream to say, "Josh and Steve, you two are toast." If we ever go to war with an actual country that tries to invade the United States, listen. If they're looking like the winners, I'm joining. That's all I'm saying. All right. <laughs> Not me. I'm going down with the ship, my friend. I will be the last man standing. I will be the last among us. On that note. Um, uh, obviously we got a fun topic planned for tonight, uh, topic from the chat. So if you're out there in the chat, welcome to the show. Go ahead and put your comments, questions, whatever you got, leave it in the chats, hearts, ones for a thumbs up, anything to let us know you're out there. You're excited for the show. We're happy to have you. We listen to the chat. We love the chat. So, uh, that's why I love this episode. I love getting ideas from the chat because oh, it just yeah. makes, it makes life so much easier for us. It makes it more well, fun. Sure. Yeah, we put a lot of time and effort into planning topics and discussions and uh, obviously something we think is relevant. But if somebody throws something yeah, more fun out you know, there, as soon as the, as soon as chat gives us a great idea for a topic, we throw it right in the mix. So that's oh, yeah. why we're talking about zombie brain infections and the science of how a zombie comes to life. I guess um, I don't know how far off of a zombie apocalypse in in real life do you think we truly are? What do you think is more likely? A war with China or a zombie apocalypse? Zombie apocalypse. That's where I think we're at. I think we're closer. I think the reality is closer than we may think about. And that's where I'm I want to pick your apocalypse? brain about it. I feel like it's due to happen. Man. All right. Go ahead. Make your case. And, and this is something you you put in the, the description, right? Is there there's bugs out there that can take over the brain of an insect, a slug, whatever it may be, and control it. Essentially, it's it's a zombie. It's a zombie, um, bacteria, bug, whatever, whatever it may be. Fungus in this case. Fungus. Yeah, well, there, there's a fungus, but there's also like a parasite, right? That can. Mm, can well, I feel like I've yeah. seen that. Maybe it's the same one in the same. I don't so, know. Well, yeah. I mean. So the technology's out concept, there. Yeah. There, it just there has there to hit humans. Things. Yeah, there are examples. There are examples. But I mean, even though. Oh, I guess you know. Oh, thanks, Bishop, for the heads up. See, I even told Carlos, our producer, I was going to forget to change our yep. uh, category title. It might be too late. We might have to just leave it. No, you should be able to switch it live time. Can you switch it midstream? I think you can. I'll have to find out. Let's see. 
Bishop says we can change it live. But can we change it from here? Yeah. Uh, we might have to change it on Twitch. Yeah, I think that's the... Uh... All right, I'll work on that. Of course, that happens on the one night we're flying without <laughs> Carlos, but that's okay. Let's I'll, I'll I'll check it out. I can multitask. But yeah, I mean, bottom line, there, there's a couple different examples. Um, one of them is actually interesting. I totally forgot about this. Well, I, I, before I get into like specific examples, I like the general concepts. The general concept, at least behind like the true science, right? I mean, obviously tons of sci science fiction about zombies and yada, yada, yada. The true actual science behind the concept is basically you have parasitic organism or parasite or what's the word that they use regarding these fungus? There's like an official word they use. Hang on, let me find uh it should be right here a parasitoid that's the word a parasitoid and the idea is that you know infection leads to manipulating the behavior of the host in order to facilitate the best interests of the infectious entity and there's more i do want to get into uh more details about that throughout the show but i don't want to you know i don't want to jump the shark i don't want to get right to it you know um but you genuinely feel like we're we're closer to a zombie apocalypse than a war with China? Yep, hundred uh, percent. I don't know about Absolutely. that, my friend. I feel like we are just one little crazy mishap away from a zombie apocalypse or superpowers. It's going to be one of the two, and I don't know which one. But I feel like we are on the cusp of it happening superpowers. any day now. All right, if you're gonna have, if you're gonna pick a superpower, what's it gonna be? Mm. entertain me i'm sitting here trying to figure out how to change it's, our, it's uh, always such a tough one i feel our, like uh thing on twitch i think you want to go that. like invincibility something crazy or invisibility like those are the fun ones how long does invincibility last if it's a superpower if it's a superpower until you get hit with your kryptonite or whatever takes away your powers what right which is kryptonite i don't know probably it's sunlight sunlight <laughs> <laughs> you're just tasty yeah oh my goodness where how do we change all right chat how do we change i feel like you, you, there's just like a category when you're live okay clearly you're not a computer whiz chat how do i change the category on twitch um i mean i can see us live on twitch that's half the battle Oh, uh, let's see. I thought it was literally Edit. as simple as like clicking the category. Oh, here we go. Category. Hmm. Just chatting. Let's change that. Just chatting. Done, I think. Okay, I think I changed it. I think success. Bishop, can you confirm? Um. Anyway, <clears throat> so yeah. There are a couple different parasitic entities that can manipulate the host of the behavior or manipulate the behavior of the host sorry not the host of the behavior <laughs> the behavior of the host and interestingly and we can get into kind of the actual science of this although bishop says uh he can confirm we are closer to zombies than world war three china See, you chat guys, con you guys chat confirmed. I'm chat 100 percent, 100 percent, putting my odds on a war with China over zombies. Where's, can uh, we bet on that on FanDuel? Maybe. That's a um, <laughs> maybe. There's definitely all right, all right. One's in the chat if you think we're going to war with China. Two's in the chat if you think we're closer to a zombie apocalypse. But the reality is, so. It comes down to a couple different bishops emphatically saying twos. I love it. Um, the idea. So let me back this up. Well, Chinese zombies, maybe. That, maybe okay. <laughs> so put a put a three in the chat if you think we're going to be invaded by Chinese zombies, and that's what causes World War Three, and it's a zombie war. What was one? Sherry says remember. we're closer to a war with China. 
I agree. I'm with Sherry on this yeah. one. We are way closer to a war with China. So, I mean, although unless we unless we elect the Donald, then uh, it's just, I would never I would never let a war with China happen. Never, never under my leadership. Probably the worst Donald Trump impression ever. But you guys get the pretty idea. good. Um, you know, he's I I just walk into China. And, 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 and tell them how, what the terms of the deal are going to be. There's not going to be a war. You're fired. I walk into, I, t- I tell the president of China, you're fired. Um, <laughs> well, let's already think so a grand, too think that's a grand total of 10 minutes to not even make a single <laughs> coherent point today. <laughs> anyway, um, oh. at least we're entertaining. The chat's mm-hmm. enjoying it. Uh, so anyway. What, so what are we talking about? We're talking about uh, quadriceps. You uh, quadriceps. I think that what is what is what are the, these parasites called? Oh, uh, zombie parasites. Parasitoids is kind of more of a general. Okay. So obviously, a parasite, right? You've got bacteria, you've got funguses, you parasites. Parasites kind of being more like um, like amoebas and protozoans and it's, it's, it's sort of it's all taxonomy stuff right but technically fungus and parasites are two different entities so okay. to say like a fungus is a parasite would be scientifically inaccurate but they're referring to that's why they i guess they've created this term parasitoid to sort of convey the behavior of a fungus that is generating this sort of parasitic activity parasitic activity kind of being a catch-all term for something that it requires a a host to really survive okay um and many could i mean some people have even made the argument that they're not um and this is referring more to like viruses like I, i don't know if they've come to a conclusion on this but i remember when i was a very early on biology student over 10 years ago Biology professors love to ask, is a virus a living organism? And you're like, well, I guess. But then they're like, but it requires a host to live. Like, it's not living outside of a host. And I was like, okay, well, I don't know. Um, What about the T virus? Yeah. Anyway, the point is, one of the things I found very interesting, when I was taking one of my introductory neurobiology and behavior courses close to 10 years ago now, the idea was they sort of started at the top and they worked their way down and they would sort of propose these like common understandings and and then kind of disprove them with uh examples and one was okay what is what is natural selection let me pose that question to you what is natural selection to you josh what does that mean it's like when something can't exist in like the normal climate of the world right essentially it gets wiped out like the dodo bird Natural selection. Uh, Is that what I'm thinking of? Sure. Okay. That's a good general definition, right? You've got the right idea. So then, I mean, another sort of way to put it is like survival of the fittest, right? Yeah. So then they sort of started. So the way this, uh, the the professors kind of presented this course is that initially early on in the semester, they presented this idea of, okay, well, it's survival of the fittest. What do you like? they, They would pose to us as students, like, how do you explain this idea of infanticide and we would read these case studies or not case studies but research articles about how a male lion if uh like let's say a female lion had a pack of cubs and a new male lion entered the pride and like drove the old male lion out who was the father of these cubs the new male lion would actually kill the cubs and the thought was well why would they do that if like why would um, why would a male lion kill the cubs of its own species in a survival of the fittest species first model, right? I mean, what, I mean, any, what comes to your mind? Like when I propose, if I was the professor, you're the student. What what comes to your mind? Chat. What do you think? Why would why would a lion kill its own species? I mean, if it knows it's not its own like direct descendant, 
You're you right, know, right? Yeah. Like that's like, that's like it's like oh, it senses that these are not mine. These are not carrying on my superior qualities. Therefore, I'm just going to take them out now and prove that I'm better. Right? It's not like a, a species. Right. Okay. It's like a lineage. Like if yeah. if lions are smart sure. enough to sense that, you're, I don't care. You're 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 landing in the ballpark. So I, that's a pretty that's a pretty sophisticated answer. I'm impressed. Give them a chat. Give them a clap. Give them clap hands in the chat for Nordy. Um, you are on the right track. I would, the one question I would pose to kind of challenge you if I was like a professor or sort of, you know, challenging my students, I said, well, who is he trying to prove anything to? Like, why, why, why does nature care about proving superiority? And the, the real question and what they actually found, because I won't torture you with endless questions. What they've actually found is that when the cubs of a mother or a mother or a lioness or, or really any, I think they've shown this across multiple species in nature. When the cubs die, it accelerates the speed at which the female uh, basically uh, can reproduce again. Her or cycle. Move on. Yeah. Her cycle yeah, accelerates and she's able to uh, <laughs> reproduce sooner. And so a new male comes in. He doesn't care about the genetic material of the male he just drove out, right? He cares about preserving his genes, not the genes of the species. And by killing the cubs of the other male, while, yes, detrimental to the species at large, it is uh, accelerates the speed at which the female is able to then reproduce, and then he can then have his own offspring sooner. Hmm. <clears throat> And so that sort of argues for this idea that genetic uh, or like survival of the fittest is not really species based, but perhaps individually like or individual organism based. Right. Interesting. So the lions, you know, like a, a, a lion doesn't care about the survival of the lion species. It cares about the survival of that individual's heritage, as you correctly pointed out. I forget, you know, obviously there's a bunch of other, um, you know, we, we looked at all kinds of different organisms in this class that disprove this idea. And ultimately what it boiled down to was this idea that um, the true root of natural selection from what they've shown boils down to genetics. And that, in fact, uh, genes will compete against each other in a single organism. And genes will manipulate the behavior of a host in order to uh, encourage the reproduction of that genetic material. And I think it was the studies were actually done in bees. Hmm. Because bees reproduce at, and this is like pulling information, like, far out of the filing cabinet of my brain. I did not research any of this before the episode. So if there's like a bee expert or like a neurobiology expert out there, which I am not, um, that is like, oh my gosh, this guy's totally wrong. Please correct us in the chat. These are these are general concepts I'm spewing. Um, basically what they found is because of the way bees reproduce, it's not like a typical, like as mammals, right? We have like, you have male, you have female, you have you know, say uh, an X or a Y sperm that comes together with an X zygote from a female and creates either a male or a female, right? Like that's how we generally think about genetic makeup. Well, with bees, all that goes out the window. And it's, I don't know the exact breakdown. But basically, the queen can, like, lay, and I think it's roughly along these lines, the queen bee can just, like, lay eggs. Doesn't require any sexual intercourse, no contribution of genetic material from another organism, can j basically just, like, lay eggs. So instead of a queen bee getting her period, she just lays eggs. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, all those eggs are males i could be wrong about this if you know correct me in the chat but well, i was gonna say how does another queen male. come along at that point so if the queen chooses to uh, basically they're all sons right sons right 
is this one of those things and, I, and this is me trying to pull back even more information where once the queen dies off like the next in line essentially goes from being a male to being a female uh, in nature aren't there like species of insects that do that uh, you're thinking of like hermaphroditic species yeah but they like the in but it's like this where they have one leader right and then the leader dies and somebody has to uh, assume that responsibility i don't know, I don't know. Um, this is where we're, we're trying to get the waters know. We're, you're, yeah. you're taking us out into waters I am not equipped to swim in. We would, okay. This is a night where we would need Carlos to do some research on the fly. Yeah. But um, I uh, – so – but if I'm roughly recalling this whole bee example, right, pretty much like the queen just lays eggs, and if those eggs were produced without uh, any form of mating, they become like male worker bees, drones or something like that, they call them. And – Based on the genetic material of those drones, they're basically, they're all brothers and they're all sons to the queen. And then I believe the queen can potentially mate with a son if she chooses. And that's what allow any like egg she lays based on mating with a son is then becomes a daughter or something to that effect. Okay. Right. And then it's the daughters of the queen who are, I don't know their role in the colony. <laughs> Carlos. Carlos may not be here uh, in person, but as tech support and uh, our connoisseur of uh, on the fly research, but he's in the chat and he says, Wikipedia says Beyonce is the true queen bee. Um, didn't you just win some award set like a record or something? Remember when I said, I'm not like in tune with pop culture. Said, or yeah, news that unless pop it's, culture. That I said, I'm not, I said, I'm not, I'm culture. not, not in tune with pop culture. Not or news tune with pop culture. Right. Unless it's the Pat McAfee show or pardon my take. Or part of like the, the world of Warcraft patch notes or something. Yeah. Any type of patch. We all know you don't read patch notes. You don't use add-ons and you refuse to use macros. I use, so I, no use pa I read, I read, patch, I read patch notes of games that, that are built fundamentally well. There's no game built fundamentally well. We've established this. Every video game has a critical flaw because developers do not know how to make a game. Also true. Going on back, on back on topic. Yeah. Anyway, what are we talking about today? What are we talking about with these bees? The whole point of the, the whole point of these bees is that the fact that they just like reproduce fundamentally differently made scientists just fundamentally question these ideas that like survival of like the species and the heritage is what's most important. And I don't remember all the details of like why the reproduction of bees kind of disproves this whole philosophy. But bottom line is what it all boiled down to is the best understanding is that it's preservation of genetic material. So an organism or an entity will behave in a way that is op optimally aimed at preserving its genetic material down to the level where genes will compete within each other or within an organism against each other for one gene to survive over the other. And so the idea that has led to these examples of these zombie ants, which is what kind of the whole idea, right? Is that a fungus will infect this ant a specific species of ant. They're typically in South America, Southeast Asia, to my understanding. The species of fungus being the, oh, I'm going to mess this up, Ophiocordyceps unilateralis. There's definitely an entomologist out there in the chat who's laughing at me right now and how I pronounce that. But this fungus basically manipulates the behavior of the host. Because on one hand, it's consuming the host for nutritional benefit. But on the other hand, if it completely kills the host, it could kill itself, right? It's sort of like what we're doing. You know, if you ask like a supreme environmentalist, and be like, humans are the greatest parasite to the world. Maybe we are. And the idea is that we are consuming our resources to the point where we will destroy the very thing that hosts us. 
Well, this fungus is not a fool. And what it does is, is it has literally found a way to infect the brain of the host ant to manipulate its behavior. So that way, as the fungus is running out of resources within the ant host, it manipulates the behavior such that the ant crawls to the top of the highest plant that it can find. The ant will bite onto a leaf or something at this highest point that it can get to. And as the fungus completely takes over and kills the organism of the ant, the ant will be positioned high up in the rainforest such that the fungus can sprout out of the back of its skull, and I'll show you some awesome pictures, to formulate spores and then throw those spores out from the highest point that it's able to reach over the canopy of the rainforest so that it can infect as many more ants or spiders, because it primarily infects ants and spiders, to basically spread its genetic material to as many new hosts as possible. It's actually not unlike the common cold, right? When you get a cold, why do you cough? That's my question for you, Nordy. Why do I cough? Yep. When you so, get a cold, so why it can, do you I'm cough? assuming based on this conversation, so it can spray out of my face into other people and get on surfaces and continue to live. Does your cough help you overcome your cold in any way? I'm guessing no. No, there's no benefit to the there's no benefit to a cough from your perspective. That behavior is not driven by you as the host. That behavior is driven by the virus fundamentally manipulating your behavior as the host in order to increase its propagation. That's my understanding. If anybody out there has got a better explanation, let me know. But I believe that is the traditional explanation. Let's see if we can uh, take a look here. So what do we got? This is literally right here. Looks uh, like a flower. I'm going to go ahead. Um, yeah, well, so these are spiders and ants who have whose behavior has been manipulated by this fungus to crawl to the top of these plants. And at the end of their life, the fungus literally grows out of the back of their skull. That's what you see here. This is literally a fungus, a mushroom, growing out of the skull of these organisms so that it can sporulate and spew its spores all over the surrounding environment. And that's how it manipulates the behavior of its host in order to increase its propagation. And obviously that leads to this whole, you know, philosophy or sci-fi of zombies, right? The zombie infection, whether it's a virus or a fungus, as is the case with, uh, the, you know, this new show, uh, the Last Among Us. I guess it was it was the a last video game us. before it was a show. Yeah, The Last of Us. Oh, I'm sorry, The Last of Us. I don't know why it's The Last Among Us. I guess I got that wrong. I, is that what I said in the introduction? Oh, 100%. Yeah. I have no idea. I just watched it for the first time like an hour ago. Yeah, I haven't watched the show. I played the game. Uh, incredible so it story. Started, it started out as a video game. Is that correct? Yes. I forget who made it. I want to say Naughty Dog. It was a PlayStation exclusive. Carlos says we call them Cordies. Who? Like people who are fanatics of the show. No, I think that's what they call the like the zombie thing, the creatures. So oh, like in the show. or whatever. Yeah. In the show, they call them Cordies. Mm -hmm. That sounds like gimmick infringement from Nordy. They wanted to steal the name Nordy, so they called themselves Cordies. I, I'm Nordy, on to you. Nordy the Cordy. Yeah. We all I'm know you're a zombie, you. Josh. One day. <laughs> Among okay. Us is, is also so, a video game. Among Us, yeah. Oh, so I just took the two you and merged them together. The last Among one, Us. I mean, if you think about the two individually and mash them together, that would be fun to watch and or play. All right. Well, we're going to get into the video game and the show in just a second. But let's take a quick pause. If you're with us today, we greatly appreciate it. We thank you so much. We've been enjoying the chat. It's popping off. We do this show because we want to talk about fun and interesting things about the human brain spine, all the things that contribute to the health, uh, and really just the prospering of people, uh, that have brain and spine injuries and illnesses, right? And the way that we 
support those people is by talking about fun and interesting brain and spine topics, talking about injury, talking about recovery, talking about uh, all kinds of things. Obviously, the stream we're doing today, I don't think there's a bunch of brain infected zombie people out there that we are trying to rally support for. But the idea yeah. is that by creating a platform of fun, entertaining topics about the brain and spine allows us to talk about these issues for patients, military, veterans, all these types of things that affect patients out there. And using that platform allows us to create community service programs and support for them. So if you would like to support the nonprofit programs of Brain and Spine Group, which is the entity that we uh, support, the nonprofit organization that we support through this live stream, you can scan the QR code at the top. You can also go to our YouTube channel at Brain Spine Group. And through there, you can either become a subscriber to our channel. You can join our community. If you're watching on Twitch and you want to sub, just head on over to our YouTube channel and hit the join button. Uh, we appreciate the, those monthly subscribers. Scan the QR code. We'll take you to our brand new website, which just went live today. You can donate to our cause. All of our financial support goes towards creating education for professionals, patients, uh, caregivers, You know, hosting live streams like this to talk about issues that are important uh, in brain and spine health. Uh, it goes towards research projects. We've got two research teams right now. We're looking at adding three and four over the course of the year, as well as resources to help our research teams be more productive. And then obviously we have boots on the ground, community service programs uh, that support patients as well as military and veterans with brain and spine injuries and illnesses. All these programs go towards our global mission of improving brain and spine health. So if you want to be a part of that, uh, go ahead and scan the QR code. It'll take you to our brand new website or go ahead and subscribe and join our community on our YouTube channel. So with that, all the housekeeping stuff out of the way, let's go ahead and get back into The Last of Us. So it started out as a video game. That's correct, Josh? Correct. Um, have you played it? I have not. Yeah. yeah. Explain Great it. Great game. Me. I've never played it. Explain it to me. So it's a, I mean, it's been a while since I played it. But essentially, you are two survivors of this disease who are trekking across different terrains to get to like a safe haven. And you have to to go through. You're some of the last people surviving. You have to fight through the hordes of these zombies to get to like a, a safety outpost. So the it's, there's like a story. I don't want to give it away, like, but it's a very heartwarming story. There's some sadness. There's some right. some drama. So, so the suspense, idea, the game know. is a primarily PVE based co-op yeah. type game. So it's it's a linear story. It's like an RPG esque game. And yeah. you play cooperatively? I don't think so. At least not in the first one, if I remember oh. correctly. I was say if we could play co-op, I mean that sounds like a brain game stream. Thumbs up if you're all for the brain game stream. It's something Nordy and I tried on Sunday. Obviously, we love to play video games offline on our own time. We did a Sunday stream to see if there was any interest or you know whether it would be fun to stream some League of Legends. We had a blast doing it. Um, I don't know how many of you out there were really truly tuned in and watching. We hope it was fun, you know, something different. If you liked it and you think we should do it more often, give us some, you know, a thumbs up or a heart in the chat. We'll definitely uh definitely be streaming some more video games because we have a blast doing it if you're in the chat and you want to stream video games with us and help us raise money for our nonprofit causes definitely give us a thumbs up uh or a chat uh an email anything i think uh it could be a lot of fun oh yeah but what it there sounds is like a, there is a new wwe game coming out in march so we could have some sort of brain and spine tournament huh? like a tournament of wrestling oh yeah Zombie wrestling? Uh, I mean, you could probably create a zombie, turns into a zombie. Okay, Bishop says, can we talk about things that turn you into a zombie that isn't fungus or anything like that? Well, um, so I, there's one thing I want, want to touch on, and this is what I want to know, like your thoughts on this being a reality. Oh, so, no! What's that? Uh, <laughs> who's that? Who, who sings that song? Oh, gosh, from Tarzan, right? I don't know. Who did the soundtrack of Tarzan? Carlos, this is terrible. I got too many this questions. Is, terrible my, night. 
I'm gonna go with Phil, Michael Bolton or Phil Collins. Phil Collins. That's what I want. Phil Collins. We're, we're gonna get D Mac if you play this. What's that? We're gonna get DMC eight if you play that. Oh, it's I don't want to know. I thought I want to know. See, all these years <laughs> I didn't know, but I don't want to know. Oh, I don't want to know. Yep, Sherry says Tarzan. See, Sherry and I are on the same page. Josh has no idea. No clue. It's been forever since I've watched Tarzan. All right, so what turns you into a zombie that's not fungus or parasite? Well, so very similar to the ant when we started talking about all of the, the ant and fungus stuff. So there's there's a parasite that essentially gets into, I want to say it's a slug, and it makes the slug turn all these crazy colors and look like it's moving. It makes itself very known to predators because it wants to be eaten by the predators to continue to live on in them and consume them what yeah it's a, i mean let me hold see on, if i can find on. the link hold on i mean hold on yeah we'll have to look this up bishop says bath salts turn you into a zombie oh, i remember that's true this. florida man florida man bath salts yeah, yeah dude he ate the dude's dumb. face ate like the dude's guy, face yeah, i'm florida eating a man's face because yeah. he's on bath salts and the dude lived Wait, wait, wait. The guy who got his face eaten lived? Yeah, man. That's the part of the story no that way. people that get left what out. What look like? Is I don't know. Florida man. Who knows what's going to come up? Face yeah, was... eaten by bath salt. Man. Bath salts, drugs, suspect, blah, 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 blah. Miami face eating attack. Miami cannibal attack. Wikipedia's got to have a picture. Rudy Eugene, Haitian descent. Is this the guy who ate the face? The guy's face? Yeah. Yeah. Ronald Edward. This is the victim. He's from Brooklyn, New York. So a Miami man ate a Brooklyn man's face. All right, let's turn on the screen share for everyone. This is what we're looking at. Rudy Eugene. Bath salt man from Florida ate Ronald Popo's face. Who is this? Guy? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, attended Manhattan's prestigious Stuyvesant High School, where he was a member of the Latin Club. Worked at Why is any of this relevant to the guy having his face eaten? Former classmate reported that after high school, Popo enrolled in a nearby city college and dropped out. Not relevant at all. He became homeless in 1976. That checks out based on the picture. Getting more relevant. On May 24, 2012, two days before the attack, workers from Miami Homeless Assistance Program discovered him and offered him the services of the Miami-Dade County Homeless Trust. Okay. Pompo declined assistance. At the time of the attack, Pompo's family, including his daughter, had not heard from him in over 30 years. Okay. Still not sure how that's relevant. During that time, they assumed Pompo was dead, suspected that he had killed himself. They were shocked to learn he was still alive at the time of the incident when he had his face eaten. He's since completed treatment and was last residing in a Medicaid facility. He received nutritional and occupational therapy and took up guitar. So this guy was able to play guitar after he got his face eaten. Mm -hmm. All right, hold on. Man. Let's turn the screen share off. Let's Google this guy so we can find a picture of his like post-eaten face. <laughs> I did. I did send you a link to the slug I was talking about, and what I think of anytime I think of like zombie parasites, let's snail. See. I don't know why I keep saying slug. Uh, let's see. What Same it is. thing. Zombie snail invaded by parasite flashes green and orange lights. I mean, this sounds like from what you described sounds kind of similar to um, Toxoplasma gondii, which is. I mean, I probably butchered that pronunciation i uh, probably sound like a southern hick but i said that but uh, like i said i may be like a crude scientist but i don't really care about the proper pronunciation of things um basically uh mice are play a role in the all right well, looks like we also got we also got some background research from carlos oh we'll check it out in slack in just a second so toxoplasma uh, it goes through a bunch of different animal hosts to ultimately like infect humans and, you know, has mm -hmm. its own problems in humans. But the way that 
it, it necessarily needs to like bounce from like different species to species in order to continue its life cycle. And so one of the things it does is it goes from mice to uh, cats. And then it goes from cats to humans. That's why like pregnant women aren't supposed to like change a litter box or really even be around cats. I don't think like taking care of cats when you're pregnant is not, like, not a great activity because um, basically what happens is the toxoplasma. Is, is this the cat poop one we were talking about? Didn't yeah, exactly. the cat poop one? So, toxoplasma gondii, which is the parasite, it goes from mice it manipulates the behavior of the mice and basically makes them what they found is that it, it, it increases their uh, risk taking behavior. So rather than hiding away, they're more likely to just like run out in the open and be caught by a cat. So it, in, it manipulates the behavior of the mouse such that they're more likely to be caught, killed and eaten by a cat. Because they want Which to. Is, like, well, that's what the well, parasite wants. That's what the parasite wants, right? right? The parasite wants to get from the mouse to the cat. So it manipulates the behavior of the mouse so that it gets eaten by the cat. Then once the cat eats it, the cat becomes a intermediary host of the parasite. And then the cat craps in your litter box. and You uh, eat the cat poop. And then a pregnant woman eats the cat poop, which, yep. you know, clearly, you know, the, the hormones of a pregnant woman make them so crazy that they just eat cat poop. Um, out. Yep. My wife definitely is uh, shaking her head going, I cannot believe my husband is saying this live on the internet right now. Husband is um, an idiot friend. I hate but, them both. But uh, his idiot friend, Nordy, confirmed that this fact, this is in true fact. Mm -hmm. And that is how the parasite manipulates the behavior of its hosts to move from organism to organism to complete its life cycle. So um, Sherry's laughing hysterically here. Um, I love it. That's what we're here for. We're here to, we're here for your entertainment. Um, so let's see Josh's example of zombie snails. Where did it go? I got like kicked over to some screen. What happened here? I don't know. It should have been USA. Our zombie flashes. Zombie snail flashes. And there's no. There's a the video. Uh -huh. there's, just a, there's a video. I think it's just a video. Oh, that doesn't help me. I can't watch a video in the middle of a live stream. Uh, let's see. It's just if you click, like, it's just a few seconds. It's not very long. Oh, check this out. Yeah, uh, it's, it's crazy looking. Dude, I'm looking at pictures of the guy who got his face eaten by okay, the Florida well, man on That's Bass crazy Salt. too. Okay, hold on. Check this out. Riveting, riveting content. I, 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 like, there's so many like grody pictures. I have to like find one that's not gonna get us canceled on YouTube. Hold on. Check this out. I don't know what's going on here, but here. That's the oh, guy. Yeah, I've, seen, I've seen that picture. Yeah. I mean, that's like that's after like extensive healing. Wow, this guy like. Guy went to town on that dude's face, man. Yeah, bath salts. Don't do them. That's a zombie attack for sure, bro. For real. And something that only happens in Florida. I'm gonna turn this off before like we lose our entire viewer base because yeah. they're disgusted. All right, let's see what Carlos has got. Carlos. Rudy Eugene, high res stock photo images. Oh, Carlos was sending me pictures of the guy's face. This is a good one. This isn't too bad. This photo is kind of interesting. I mean, this is more of like... I mean, that's insane. Dude. Fresh and like... I mean... I, mean, I'm I remember that story. This might get us demonetized on YouTube, so I'll go ahead and turn that off. Well, we won't keep that up yeah. too long. Although, the, I'm fascinated by it. It's crazy. Oh my gosh. But then, so all of this begs the question is can parasitic organisms exist that create zombies in typically insects no. or whatever and, and migrate hosts? So the technology is there. So theoretically, could the government or some underground society cool. create a virus that would essentially bring on the zombie apocalypse? Yes or no? Yes or no from a doctor. I have so okay. many thoughts going through my head right now that I never even thought before. Let's the just say there's a, 
there is a lot of overlap between our initial theme of a war with China and this idea of government engineered zombies. Oh my goodness. Government or private organizations, you know, that start patient zero, maybe, maybe like the T virus, maybe it's in like ra raccoon city. I don't know. Maybe, maybe Dr. Fauci is a zombie. Anthony Fauci, is he engineering a zombie virus? I think that you never know. Seems big legit. pharma, big pharma. Seems legit. I you think can't convince what, me. They're not. I think that's why we need the man of the people, Donald D. Trump, to go ahead and uh, expose the zombie, the next zombie apocalypse, and put an end to it before the huge, the huge, huge. Yep. I mean, my favorite. My favorite bit is Dave Chappelle talking about how Trump comes out. It is like talking about like tax violations and stuff like that. He goes, I know about them because I use them. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? No. Oh my goodness. Hold on, hold on. This is definitely going to get demonetized for this episode, but we got to find it. Hold on. Worth Dave it. Worth it. Worth it for a good laugh. Dave Chappelle. Donald Trump. It's got to be like a short or something. Dave Chappelle on Donald Trump. Uh, I don't know if that's it. Here we go. Let's try this one. Hold on. There's an ad. Another ad. Oh, I'll but, probably have to change my screen share. Probably. But realistically, do you think that there could be a virus out there that would eventually lead to zombie behavior? Mm, I mean... Do you think I it's in a, the realm of possibility? Knowing oh, what you know? I don't know. I mean... That's what makes good... Good science fiction, right? Is the fact where it's like just close enough where like it's believable and gets you engaged. Oh, it's definitely believable. Here's the thing. There's some arguments that the greatest organism, while we may, you know, humans are not the fastest. We are not necessarily even the smartest. We are not even, as a species, the best physical anything. One of the very interesting things that was said to me by an evolutionary biologist at the time when he was a graduate student, he's now, uh, I think, a professor, probably not a full professor, like an assistant or an associate professor at Michigan. I actually look him up real quick. What was his name? Michigan Evolutionary Biology. His name, I'm just faculty. I mean, this guy's got to be on faculty now. This was so many years ago. Jake. That was his name. Jake. I'm trying to remember his last name. Jake, 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 Jake. Where are you? Are you here? Are you on faculty at Michigan? That was the last I heard from him. He was recently hired as faculty at Michigan. Jake. Uh, anyway, I'm going to find this guy. Uh, basically, <clears throat> he said, is the thing that makes humans... Here we go. Boom. Jacob Burv. Let's see. Let's, uh, let's see what Jacob Burv's up to. So Jacob Burv was a TA... He was a PhD student while I was an undergraduate student. And I actually got, we got along very well. Um, one of the things he said to me, kind of curious, this guy, pretty smart guy. This guy is, uh, I saw Yale. Yale. this guy, I think he did undergrad at Yale. He does PhD at Cornell, which is where I met him. Obviously he was a P graduate PhD student who was a TA. Um, and then did a couple postdocs is now faculty, I guess. I'm going to say where's 
Fields of study, affiliations. I don't even see his position. Oh, he's a life sciences fellow, apparently. I guess he's not faculty. I thought he was hired as faculty. I could be wrong. I don't know what this guy's position is. Bottom line is, this guy's no dud. He's a smart guy. And, uh, you know, he said to me, you know, very simply, he's like, you know, the thing that makes humans so interesting, no one manipulates, no organism manipulates their environment like humans do. Right? Like, you could make the argument, maybe an ape is... Closest thing right? that can, like, build a house. Kind of just as intelligent, right? just as intelligent as a human. Right from like a raw intellect standpoint. Sure, we don't share their language. We can't necessarily communicate with them. But you can't necessarily say like interspecies wise, they don't share like the same raw intellect. Right? We don't know what's going on inside their brain. I mean, who knows? The point is like the thing that like you can clearly objectively look at the evidence and say like, what do humans do better than any other species in the world? We manipulate our environment. Right, we went from being a wild jungle roaming species to building cities. Right, we've manipulated our environment. Right, we've gone to uninhabitable habitats and turned them into habitable places. Right, like what we do is we manipulate our environment. And that's the thing that like truly sets humans apart. So in terms of like, oh, well, this is all getting at what your question of like, do you think we could actually. Like, is, do you think that, that there's a possibility that a virus, a parasite could take over the human brain and mean, manipulate us to the point of like a zombie esque plague of some kind? It has to be possible. I don't think it's impossible to say it's not. Um, put it this way from a purely scientific perspective. Now. If you ask the part of me that is not the scientist, the part of me that is a uh, God-believing, faith-driven individual, I would say that I think God is a bigger plan in this world than allowing a fungus to turn us all into zombies. Uh, but from like a raw scientific perspective i think it's kind of hard to make an argument that it's not possible That's i just don't think that if i if i genuinely had to say do i think it's going to happen i would say no but there's more than enough scientific plausibility to say that it could happen i agree with that that's why what did carlos say that's why the last of us is more plausible because they He's an organism that is already taking over bodies. Yeah. So NPR actually wrote an interesting article addressing this and an entomologist or maybe not an entom fungus specialist or somebody. I think at a Utah university of Utah basically was like, well, uh, very unlikely because the body temperature of humans makes it such that fungus can't survive. But with global warming, we're seeing, increasing abilities of fungi to infect humans so maybe it's possible that basically fungus could evolve to one day do it but i don't think it's very likely i thought that was pretty weak does it have to does it have does it have to be argument my friend does it have to evolve or can it be genetically modified in a lab stored in area 51 um I mean, we're definitely going to have to join. I mean, whatever happened to those guys that were going to like, uh, what, what is the uh, Dragon Ball Z thing where they're like, Wah. you know what, what are about? they turning Super Saiyan or they go oh, in like yeah. a hyperbolic gonna, like, chamber? Those guys are like, I'm going to Super Saiyan in there. You know what I'm talking about? Whatever happened to those guys? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> that mean, was like a, that was a meme on the internet for like ever. Yeah. I mean, it was like, but middle of the pandemic when people had nothing to do maybe that's the biggest issue people we need to go back to an era where people had more oh naruto not where they just do the run the run like the naruto run and they just run all right i'm not an anime guy i carlos Me either i but see, i do this watch this is, carlos. Yeah. this is why we need carlos right because none of us we don't have any any idea about any of these things but anyway yeah 
So there's that. Um, I think that could be that could be our next show is like the tinfoil hat show where you just talk about conspiracy theories or possibilities. I could talk about conspiracy theories endlessly. Uh, maybe we have to have Steve on one night, one night, and we'll talk about Pizzagate. I mean, I feel like I could talk about Pizzagate forever. I don't remember the, the full story of that, but Pizzagate. I mean, it's like all the like how the I mean government connection to like I remember Jeffrey something Epstein crazy. Yeah, I remember it was something wild, stuff. but it made you think. Shocker says, "What about a bloodborne pathogen like rabies, transferable via saliva into an open wound, and all along with erratic and belligerent behavior?" Sounds like a zombie to me. Actually, well, that's interesting. so. That's another thing that happened. I'm pretty sure this was a form of rabies. There was like a, a zombie squirrel epidemic, yeah. and I use the word epidemic very loosely here. There was just like it. There was squirrels that were acting extremely strange, and not any way any they were very odd they were very like calm and not running around but like it was a form of rabies i believe that were making them act like zombies slow moving weird erratic you know so th there's a lot of these examples like real world examples yeah. of zombie-esque behavior well i mean i think that is where great question sh uh, shocker great question i mean maybe the real realization is like Zombies are among us, my friend. They're already here. They're already, already here, here. It's not what if. It's the fact that it's here. And the thing is, this kind of going back to what I was saying, like humans are just so good at manipulating their environment that we can stop. Adapt and, and I mean, theoretically, yeah. I mean, if you had a critical mass of people infected with rabies, Theoretically, I guess you could have a zombie apocalypse, but we're able to leverage our environmental control to prevent that. Um, for now. I mean, we've created vaccines for rabies. We've created antidotes. Not really antidotes. Kind of like acute treatment of like antibodies that... Um, prevent rabies from progressing so it's kind of one of those things where it's like we've developed so many tools where even if a person were to become infected we can stop it from becoming a problem obviously if it becomes an issue like if it's allowed to spread we can't necessarily cure it but we can stop it before it can spread and actually, interestingly, I Googled rabies as, uh, you know, Shogger is bringing this up. And the CDC does say that the most common way rabies is transmitted from human to human is through organ donation, which I think is fascinating because they had a whole Scrubs episode on that. Yeah, I remember this going one. back oh, 10 man. years ago. I mean, this is like, I mean, one of the best two episodes of Scrubs ever made. That is fantastic because it's a two-parter right yeah, yeah 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 i mean i this, I is, this is an episode. episode of scrubs that 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 brought me to tears at yeah like, it's, it's like one where like, they go away from the comedy and they make like it real years old when that yeah. when i saw that episode of scrubs when it Man, first came scrubs. out and i'm like i'm like getting ready to enlist in the marine corps i'm like in tears over you know dr cox losing three patients to organ transplants from a rabies infested patient i was like oh my gosh Dr. Cox is never going to recover. What are we going to do? That's when he goes down his whole uh, JD has to bring him back, right? Mm -hmm. His like drinking, his drinking problem. Mm -hmm. Man, I love Scrubs. I know. I I'm going to go ahead and say it on, on stream. Scrubs is the greatest television show ever produced. Nothing ever made has ever come close. Uh, the fact that Zach Braff and Donald Faison are doing T-Mobile commercials right now. While mm -hmm. I do love seeing them is a shame. But on the other hand, good for them because you know what? Once you've made the best show in the world, what are you going to do after that? Nothing. Eagle. Eagle. Oh, <sighs> What Their podcast is great too. They have a podcast where they talk about uh, it. Yeah, like, I watched it's like fun. Yeah. half of the first season of their podcast. And it was one of those, like, I don't know, just I'm not a big podcaster, I which love, is probably a weird podcasts. thing to say as someone <laughs> sitting here live streaming. 
Um, but for me, I don't know. I watch a ton of YouTube videos. So same thing. I, guess, I can't see the video. It's just not for me. Yeah. I I, what I will say is the, the podcast that have a video format is much better than just listening. But man, I love them both. Does their podcast have a video format? Yeah, the Always Sunny in Philadelphia one does. Mm. So if you like that show, that show's so theirs great. is good. Oh my goodness. It's weird seeing them out of character. That's how much of that show I watched. It's like it's weird seeing them That's interact like, as human like, beings. When I started watching um uh mythic quest raven's banquet it was like <laughs> so weird seeing mac in that role yeah but i think they have a new season i have to watch i uh i think i've watched only the first couple episodes of their latest season but okay. those guys are great man yeah charlie is just hilarious he's brilliant he's the charlie he's the, is oh. just the man <laughs> and they, this is Charlie. Why are you always eating cheese? You smell like you smell horrible. Just, you know, the cheese is like only like three weeks expired. You know, I was like, I don't want to like let it go away. So Frank didn't want it. I was like, I'll just eat it. I'll just eat it. So yeah. Charlie, man, cracks me up. Shocker says chronic wasting disease in deer is also pretty zombie like, mm -hmm. though not transmissible to humans. It's still pretty scary. Also, I have to agree, Scrubs is the best. All right, well. Shocker, you're definitely on the VIP list, my friend. If you're a Scrubs fan, yep. Let's check out. Well, so, what is? Yeah, yeah, what is this? Deer. I don't know anything about this. What is this? Yeah, because I've just been bringing up the examples that I've I've heard about or oh, seen over my lifetime. So this is another one. We got another one that's zombie like. It's like CDC website. What do they have to say? Then again, CDC is not exactly the most trustworthy place for information. Cancel me. Because they're hiding Chronic the zombies. Disease. Oh, it's a prion disease. Oh, gosh. Prions scare the crap out of me. Let's Here remind the people what a prion yeah. is. Oh, gosh. You want me to ramble for 15 minutes about prions? Prions yeah. are insane. So, I'm trying to think of the simplest way to like. So, prions. The best way to explain a prion that I've thought of is and I, I think i've used this i must have used this example before um bishop says hold on stop the show <laughs> zach breff is the worst actor ever that's what? oh I my mean, don't God. get me wrong uh, okay hold on hold garden on. state hold on hold on hold on i'll i'll give bishop i'll give bishop credit where it's due i have not enjoyed zach braff as an actor in anything outside of scrubs garden i've state. watched his material because I'm a fan of Scrubs and I enjoy seeing him. That being said, I'm a much bigger fan of Donald Faison. Also true. Um, as an actor. Clu I mean, who doesn't, love, who doesn't love Remember the Titans? I oh, mean, come that's on. right. Yeah. Classic. Classic. Um, The Don is awesome. That being said, the best thing that came out of Scrubs was Sarah Chalky. Uh, hmm. Was it one of the Francos in it in the later seasons that shouldn't have happened? Yeah, that uh, the the younger one what was this? not James Franco. Um, this is it's why a... I could never finish a thought. Chat <laughs> destroying my train of thought. Hold on, chronic wasting disease. It's a prion disease. Hold on, oh, we're prions. gonna get into. Go we're gonna get back. We're coming range. back to Scrubs. We're coming back to Scrubs. Let me finish explaining what a prion disease is. <laughs> Do you remember like in the 90s, those snap bracelets where they were like a little piece of metal yeah. bracelet inside a bracelet and you would, like snap it and it would wrap mm -hmm. around your wrist? That uh, prion is a type of shrimp. No. Uh, hold on. <laughs> He's getting deeper. <laughs> it's similar. It's not a prion. Hold on. Hold on. Shrimp. Prawn. That's what it's prawn. T R A W N. Prawn. Not a prawn. That is what it is. Not a prion. A prawn. That is the shrimp like mm -hmm. thing. Anyway, thank you for derailing me yet again, Bishop. Anyway, <clears throat> so you remember those bracelets in the 90s where you snap them on your wrist and they wrap yeah. around? Sherry's with me. 
that's basically what a prion is. It's like a protein in a cell that basically, you know, will hit another protein. Basically, like imagine a misshapen protein. And what it does is it has the ability to encounter other proteins, <clears throat> kind of bump into them. And like, it's like, imagine two proteins bump into each other and it causes the good protein to like snap into the shape of the bad protein. That's the simplest explanation I can think of. And that's basically how a prion works. So the prion is a dysfunctional protein because it's misshapen. And then it bumps into other good proteins and causes the good proteins to turn into bad misshapen proteins that dysfunctional. And then they build up, build up, build up. And then sort of like this idea we've talked about in another podcast where when you have a bunch of cellular junk, it's like they can't take out the trash. And then it just overruns the cell and starts killing off cells. And so like the most common, like spontaneous prion disease in the brain is called CJD, Kreutzfeldt-Jakob syndrome. And it basically it's like once it's develops, it rapidly evolves and causes like very severe neurodegeneration over a very short period of time. Um, and then technically Chagra is right, right? Technically any protein can be a prion if it's misshapen enough. The question is, does it have the ability to cause good proteins to conform to its shape and further, uh, you know, uh, propagate a disease process anyway? So that's that deal. We got a prions, prawns back to scrubs. The best thing to come out of scrubs, Sarah Chalky. Great. Dr. Cox. Turk, great. Dr. Cox was famous before Scrubs. That's true. Zach Braff, his character in Scrubs, top notch. Carried the show. I fundamentally believe it. Don't care for anything he really did after Scrubs, but I'm such a Scrubs fan that I don't care. Like, I'm going to watch anything that Zach Braff produces, and I'm probably just never going to watch it again. Um... Man, what was the best thing that ever came out of Scrubs? Man, there were some great characters. Great characters on Scrubs. The janitor? Yeah, I mean, the janitor, honestly, was like very well regarded on that show for who he was and what he did as an actor. Not my personal what's, cup of tea. What's the guy with the hook? Uh, Leonard, the security guard. Yep uh cool oh man i'm like trying to think like who is like one of the best characters like when they get to that season and that character comes on the show i mean you can't beat michael j fox on scrubs i mean come oh, on that was, yeah those that were was some, good. those were some primo episodes heavy hitters mm. bob kelso might actually have turned into one of my favorite characters to come out of scrubs well, when him and Dr. Cox have the dynamic of like, he's like, oh, now you see what I had to deal with when they flip roles, right? Like that was a fun. Yeah. A fun uh, the dynamic. whole bit where Kelso was like getting fat, I thought was kind of a weird bit on Scrubs. Mm -hmm. It was interesting, but it was not my personal cup of tea. Oh, man. Lonnie. Lonnie Ooh. was a pretty fun character. Brendan Frazier. Brendan Frazier, yeah, but that I mean, was a whole good story arc. That was two, like two, two different episodes yeah. at the end of season two. Well, and then it comes back, doesn't it? Like, isn't well, it like two? Season, I think no, it's, it's, it's one two. episode and there's a break and then it's the second it episode, like two. in between. I think it was think. season two, if I'm not mistaken. Brendan that Frazier, was, I think dying. That's, what, that was, was like the works. first, those are the first couple episodes where it got like real. They like really changed the tone of the show to like get that really like emotionally riveting component. And it was just like, Oh, so good. So good. Yeah. Those are some of my favorites, oh, man. I mean, so many good episodes. I mean, you can't beat my lunch and, uh, what's the one where I fall in hero, I think are the two episodes where Dr. Yeah. My lunch is where Dr. Fox hero. Yeah. basically kills three patients. My lunch because crazy Jill Tracy they run into at the grocery store. Now I'm really showing the extent to which I've seen scrubs, right? They run into crazy Jill Tracy at the grocery store. And then JD goes back the next day and runs into her again at the grocery store and ignores her. 
And then, you know, obviously she has this history of depression and then comes into the hospital dead. And JD thinks that she killed herself and, you know, he could have been there for her after running into her two days prior. And, um, turns out she actually died from rabies, but they had already transplanted her organs by the time they find out. And so JD feels this huge relief because he didn't kill her by ignoring her. Rabies killed her. But then Dr. Cox transplanted her organs into three of his patients and completely falls off the rails. So my lunch, great episode, followed by my fallen hero. One of, so good. one of my favorite episodes, and I forget what the character's name is, but they um, he doesn't have any family left. So JD and Dr. Dr. Turk, like, they're about to go out to steak night. Steak night. Steak night. How does and he then, start things so fast? <laughs> but then they end up uh, they end up bailing on their their steak night to spend the night in the hospital with um, George, this patient, George. George. Yep. that is George. one of my. I can watch that I episode on repeat. I love. I love that episode. George is uh, oh man. Uh, and then Shogger says, I think the scene that stuck with me the most was when Kelso had to fire his best friend, played by Dick Van Dyke. Uh, what was his name? Uh, Doctor. Is that when he's losing it? He's like. Yeah, he's like an older guy. Doesn't really keep up with his medical knowledge. Played by Dick Van Dyke. Super friendly guy. Mm -hmm. Everyone loves him. He has a uh, JD has to put a central line in a patient. And Dick Van Dyke's like, let's do it the old school way and uh, do a do a do a, uh, a cut down. And a cut down is when you literally like make an incision and dissect down to the blood vessel and then stick a catheter in the blood vessel. Whereas I've literally never done that. I've only been trained. Whereas the more modern way to do it is the Seldinger technique, which is, you know. It's kind of complicated to explain, but basically, like, if you want to get into a blood vessel, you basically use ultrasound and a needle, and you stick that needle into the blood vessel, the vein, the big giant vein that you need, <clears throat> and what you can do is you get the needle into the blood vessel, you can draw back, you get a bunch of venous blood, you're like, great, we got a bunch of, you know, um, we got the right type of blood, right? We didn't hit an artery, we're in a vein, right, where we want to be. Then you could take the syringe off. And the needle's got a big hollow bore through the middle of it. And you can take a wire and you stick it down through the needle. And that wire you thread down into the um, you thread down into the vein. And then you can pull the needle out. So now you've just got a wire, a guide wire that goes down through the skin into the blood, uh, into the vein. And then you can take the catheter, which is like the rubber tubing. And you can feed it over the guide wire, get it down into the vein, and then you can pull the guide wire out and just leave the catheter in the big giant vein. That's the that's a cell dinger technique. And so the whole point is Dick Van Dyke is telling JD, oh, do it the old school way. We'll do a cut down. And JD ends up cutting into the carotid artery. And obviously then the general surgery team has to fix it. Whereas if you use the ultrasound and a cell dinger technique, it's much safer, it's much faster. And the whole point of the episode is this guy wasn't keeping up with his medical knowledge. And even though JD was trained and comfortable doing a Seldinger technique, he did an older, uh, more invasive, more dangerous technique because the supervising attending wasn't uh, up to speed on the latest medical knowledge. And so uh, even though he was best friends with the chief of medicine, Bob Kelso, Bob Kelso had to fire him. Um, well, so that, that's an interesting thing. So, Scrubs did have some real world like medical hundred percent lingo, I mean, or, which is cool. Hundred percent. I mean, I've rewatched Scrubs so many times, and every time I watch it, as I've gone further along in my own career, I'm just like amazed at how much more like, like how not, medically not, accurate it was. Yeah, it's not ER, right? It's not like yeah. a I mean, show that should be more wrong. medically accurate, but like it's good that they they kept that because I've always been you know, reality is what resonates with people. Like the yeah. more real you can make anything, the like we talk about the zombie stuff, right? The more real like, you can make it, the better yeah. it is. And I've seen, I mean, I haven't watched like a ton of Grey's Anatomy recently, but like I've seen like scenes and clips pop up on YouTube. In general, I think their medical uh, reality is much better today than it was 15 years ago. I mean, I was a junior in high school, I think, when Grey's Anatomy came out. 
Yeah, I remember in my biology class, it was like you could get extra credit or something like that if you watch Grey's Anatomy and like ask the question around something that they mentioned. Wow, yeah, like uh, uh, sounds like a very ridiculous. rigorous. Yeah. Sounds like a very rigorous uh, high school you went to. AP Biology. Jeez, I didn't take a single AP class in high school, so and I'm doing all right for myself, or I'm not. I don't know. I mean, who knows? <laughs> We're here. Um, so, um. Yeah, I mean, this was, I mean, so my point was Grey's Anatomy is much more medically accurate today than it was 20 years ago. The fact that Scrubs is medically accurate 20 years ago, it was just like so ahead of its time in terms of like valuing medical accuracy in TV writing. And I watch it and I'm like, it's just, I mean, it's outdated. Don't get me wrong. It's like, there's a lot of things they mention where I'm like, that's medical knowledge from 20, 25 years ago, but it's actually still cool. Um, yeah. Still cool. Oh, I mean, that's great. I, I remember, you remember the musical episode that they did? Yeah. Um, there's, I was just line. thinking about like some of the, the one, the band that does like the, the theme song and they have another song in the show at some point it's fantastic laszlo bain is the band that wrote the theme song for scrubs superman superman keep testing my scrubs knowledge I hey, you're on rattle, it man. i can rattle off scrubs, scrubs trivia night we're taking Ryan. i mean literally i would sit there i remember when i was a you know enlisted marine at mos school sitting in the barracks and i was like what are you gonna do you know nothing you had like Facebook and like World of Warcraft in the barracks, or you could go go to a strip club. But I was a, a faithful, faithfully uh, engaged man. I did not go to the strip clubs, so I'd sit there and just go through. I remember I had this thing on Facebook called Scrubs Trivia, and I would spend hours <laughs> just flipping through Scrubs Trivia over and over and over and over and over again. So ask me anything. I mean, my brother, my brother might be, I mean, literally is the only person I've ever talked to that will throw scrubs facts at me. I've never heard. I've never talked to another human being in my life that has ever spit a scrubs fact at me that I don't know. My brother is the only person who has ever, ever spit a scrubs fact at me that I don't know. So it's genetic and you two will fight any other genes to carry down the scrubs knowledge base forever. It might be. It might be genetic. Um, I, I mean, he was the one who introduced me to it. I remember um, this was back when we we're both in high school. And it was when Netflix, before Netflix streamed, you got DVDs. Yeah, Oh, yeah. And I remember the Netflix DVD came for Scrub Season 1. And my brother was like, my brother ordered it. And he's like, let's watch it. I was like, it sounds stupid. Like, why would I be? In I hate medical shows. I'm not interested in any of that crap. And he's like, just watch it. And I put it on. And I'm like, this is hilarious. Man. I'm hooked. And I've just been a fan ever since. It's I was trying to fan ever since. I was trying to watch Lost with those DVDs and they'd come in the mail. And like one of the season discs would always be like out of stock and you have to wait. Man. Lost? It was hard to get caught up on Lost from Netflix DVDs. I was never a big Lost fan. Bro. I like phased out after the third season. I never finished it. Mm. They're dead the whole time. Spoiler alert. Makes sense. Makes sense. I think. Hmm. I think Aziz Ansari in Scrubs season eight references was, the lost season finale. Probably. Also ridiculous. You just pull that off the top of your head. Aziz Ansari, man. That guy was pretty darn funny in Scrubs. Although he was kind of like that character you like love to hate. But, I mean, he was that in Parks and Rec, too. He plays no, it well. Parks and Rec, I thought he was just great. I, I just loved him. In but Parks he, he was obnoxious, right? Like, that was I his didn't find him character. obnoxious. I thought found him hilarious. Oh, he was Treat hilarious. Treat yourself. Mm -hmm. Treat yourself. Sparkle suds. Oh, man. But, no, I mean, we got it, really I mean, derailed. One of the characters out there are better than Ron Swanson. Let's be honest. Oh, man. Ron Swanson is fantastic. That and, um, oh man, what's the Jake Johnson's character in New Girl? It's fantastic. Oh, um, Nick Brooke Miller. Yeah. I've actually met that guy in real life. Yeah. He's, he's from Chicago. He is just Nick 
Miller in real yeah, life. Yeah, which know. is fantastic. The that, guy was not, that guy wasn't That character is great. <laughs> just, they just casted him to be himself. Although Perfect that being character. said, um, the uh, Nick, you know, what's his actual name? I completely forget. Jake Johnson. Jake Johnson, duh. I know that. I, I mean, I've literally met him yeah. like for a grand total of like an hour. Mm -hmm. Um, I just happen to know somebody who lives basically like next door to him. And I was at this person's house just hanging out, uh, for like a barbecue or something. And Jake Johnson just shows up. I'm like, um, I literally look at him. I'm like, because they, they, they share a fence. I'm trying to like, not give too much detail out of respects for their personal yeah. privacy. They share a fence with this person. And so rather than like coming through the house, like everyone else at the party, he just sort of like wanders through the fence, like a typical neighbor would, if they were going over to their neighbor's barbecue. Mm -hmm. And I was standing out in the backyard where there really weren't very many people. And I just sort of like, this guy just kind of like walks up to me and I kind of like turn around and I'm like, where did you come from? Did you like jump out of a tree or something? And he gives me like the typical Nick Miller where he's like, <laughs> I jump out of a tree. <laughs> and I was like, where am I right now? <laughs> I was like, did Nick Miller just laugh at my joke? What? Who am I yeah. talking to right yeah. now? So that's my claim to fame. I made, I made Nick Miller laugh organically. Nice. nice. Yep. Greatest accomplishment in my life. If you're out there, Jake Johnson, give me a thumbs up. Watch, watch the stream, which we know you are. So. Yeah. We know Jake Johnson is watching the stream. Let's be honest. It's no big deal. Uh, yeah. So that was fun. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's literally like, that, that's just him. Like his, that's my favorite character. Like, everything favorite. about his body language and intonation. Like it's just all him. Although that being said on the note of this guy, if you want to talk about another great episode, I mean, uh, an episode of television that like pff, hit me in the heart. Mythic Quest. That like two part backflash episode in season one with Jake Johnson. Oh, I, I mean, don't remember. Oh, I mean, top. I mean, one of the best episodes of TV I've ever seen in my Mythic life. Mythic Quest is good. I just don't remember. Like my my remember, recollection for be, anything. It was like you know how they do these like two episodes, um, a season where it's sort of like flashbacks. Kind of like oh yeah, yeah. So it, I do. Flashbacks. That one's almost like yeah. I remember that one now. And um, Nick and, Miller or Jake Johnson's like his dad, right, or something, uh, or like him. It. No, it's him because it's the old dude. No, 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 no. The old dude is um oh gosh, what's the old who's the old guy from Mythic Quest? The writer. Yeah, the writer. Um isn't that who Jake Johnson plays in the flashback? No, 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 or no? No, no, no. What's that or guy? Is that his boss? What's that guy's name? Oh my gosh. I don't know. You I guess CW, right? CW yeah, CW. CW. So CW's like origin story is like the flashback of season two. Oh, okay. So season one, the flashback is like Jake Johnson meets this girl. They create this video game. And the whole point is it's like the origin of creating video games was this idea of like creative passion. And then their video game ends up getting bought out by a big corporation that just wants to take the grassroots creative artistic vision of their original video game that their community loved and was so passionate about. And they just corrupt and destroy the whole video game by trying to monetize it and turn it into something it never was. And it was just like, oh, as a as somebody who's grown up loving playing video games, let me tell you how realistically accurate that episode of TV. I mean, it that was a shot through the heart where I was just like, oh, I hate you, Activision. You've destroyed everything I grew to love as a child. Screw you, Activision. That's true. Which we know you're listening also. Activision has done nothing good in the gaming community. Factual information. Yeah. They have, like, all they've done is buy up and destroy great, great mm -hmm. games. What does Bishop got to say? Uh, we're like, uh, you know, we're way over the hour. True Detective Season 1, single-handedly best season of television to ever air. It's up there. Can't it's confirm. Up there. 
Can't confirm. It's up there. And he says, question, Romero zombies or Dawn of the Dead remake zombies? I'm not a big zombie person. You want to take this one, Josh? Man, I can't remember Romero zombies. Um Carl Longbottom. Is that that's it, CW, right? Yeah, that's CW. Yeah, yeah. CW Longbottom. CW Longbottom. A great character. I mean, I'm I'm always a fan of just like the slow moving, get aggressive when they're they're out for blood zombies, but you can sneak past them, right? Mm-hmm. Like I, as long as they're not the what is it, World War Z zombies where they're running up walls and stuff, like I'm here for it. I don't like the fast yeah, zombies. Yeah, on that note, I'm not here I for that. In uh, watching The Last of Us when that zombie's like running the dude down i was like whoo zombie can move man that's the whole point of zombies are supposed to be like slow and lumbering they can, but when they're when they're a chance to like when they've got like uh face. when they've got brains or they send something like I'm, I'm cool with them speeding up but like they're like running up walls and like they were being like a unified pack like of that zombies movie legion like, do you see that movie think... legion no oh it's a good i got some good rl stories about legion Shocker says his comments on Ted and Carla doing the snippet of the Ockbell version of Talk Dirty Me by Poison was always funny to me. Yeah, at the end where um after they're finished singing it, Ted goes, I love you. And Carla's like, What? And he said, Oh, nothing, nothing, nothing. Dude, I can't believe Ted's dead, man. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. I died of cancer. That guy's a great actor. I mean, absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I love the, I mean, the actually, you know what was great about Ted? Um, the, not the spinoff, but uh, the secondary show that uh, Bill Lawrence put together, uh, Cougar Town. Oh, yeah. Like all the cameos on the Scrubs. Because yeah. they, they had Dr. Cougar Cox's Town. wife, great. too. Yeah. What's that? They had Dr. Cox's wife, too. She was like, an, she was a main Dork. person to that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, her character, I always thought her character was kind of odd. Yeah. So the interesting thing I loved about Jordan and Scrubs is she started out as this like really like bad bitch character that, you know, in Dr. Cox's words, not mine. I think the baby is actually eating the bitch cells inside of her. And she sort of softens over the course of the show. Um, and then it was like Cougar Town was like kind of just this like continuation of that character where now she's yeah. very like maternal, like has this like history like oh she's been this like bad bitch that you know but it's like she's just this like suburban mom who likes to like never forget her glory days of being like this you know hard ass lawyer and i thought that was kind of i don't know i get i never dig i I never dug it i I don't remember enough of cougar town to remember the characters but i just i do remember i watched it cougar town i've seen multiple times i've watched all the seasons multiple times it's like one of those shows. It's like I, I I enjoy it, but I never know why. Yeah, I love because Mad TV. I do. It's I don't know. I mean, the best part of the best part of Cougar Town are all the community references. Six seasons in a movie, <laughs> and uh, and the cameo that Abed from Community has in Cougar Town. It's great. See, I don't even think I've watched that enough of it, but I love have Community you seen too. Community? Oh yeah, so I love okay. Abed. So, you know, Abed's just, like, so he, you know, Abed tells this whole story about how he was on the scene. Of oh, Cougar Town. yes, yes. And everyone's like, and thinks was... Abed's like lying. Well, Cougar Town has a scene where I think. Because uh, he's obsessed with that show, right? Yeah, like yeah, in, yeah. In I, think Court, I think it's Courtney Cox and her son that she's like oddly kind of in love with. I forget his name. I always thought he was a weird guy. It was one of those, like, I thought the casting of Cougar Town was really weird. Um, it was just all over the place. That's yeah. Like... Uh, they're like sitting having coffee and there's this guy like staring at them and they're like really spooked out by it. And the guy just like runs off and they're kind of just like, eh. and it's like the exact story that Abed's like telling and it, it's Abed, right? So Abed has this cameo in Cougar Town and it's just like, what in the what? Like if you're not, if you didn't see both shows, you have absolutely no idea what just happened. There's yeah. No context given whatsoever. It's amazing. I love it. I love things like that in TV. And in the streaming world, I feel like it doesn't happen as often. I don't know. I could be wrong. But I mean, that's a whole different conversation. Yeah. I mean, we've been all over the place. Man, we've talked about a lot of TV shows. I feel like we could have a whole live stream just talking about TV shows. We could do do TV shows. 
We can talk about TV shows. Somehow we went from zombies to Cougar Town. To be fair, there are a lot of zombie TV shows, movies, so. Yeah. I mean, I remember when we were in Afghanistan. You know, you have very limited entertainment sources. We love playing those, uh, like, zombie games on PlayStation or whatever the heck they were. I don't remember at the time. It's like, whatever you get your hands on. Yeah. Like, we would just mow down zombies. We're just just mowing down Taliban by day, zombies by night. I mean, that's what we did. That's how you pass the time. So I guess we can we can end it on that. What is your favorite zombie game or movie, TV show, anything? Well, I don't know. I'm not a big zombie game or TV show person. Um, you had to pick one. If I preferred, I'd probably play zombie games, but... I mean, when I was playing them, it was when it was like this sort of like side game mode. There was no like dedicated zombie killing games. Uh, and then I never really continued with it. So, but I do remember this great story, you know, this movie Legion. It wasn't that popular of a movie, but it was like a zombie esque movie. And. I remember being out at 29 Palms, which is like this desert training facility for the Marine Corps up in like uh, Palm Springs area, California. The Marine Corps has this big giant training base out there. And um, when we were out there, my buddy John was like, hey, this movie Legion just came out. We should all go to the movie theater and see it. Because we weren't out there doing a field op. We were out there like as like an advanced party doing like pre-field op preparation, signing for equipment, doing a bunch of logistics stuff to get ready for the unit to come out and do a training exercise. So we weren't actually like in the field. We were sort of like, you know, would work during the day and then could kind of just do whatever the heck we wanted at night. And so one night we're like, Let's all go get beers at the little warrior club, which is where you can get like $2 Bud Lights on base. Drink a bunch of those. Rad will be the designated driver since I was only like 19 at the time. I couldn't even drink on base, but all my buddies, you know, they're like 22, 23. So they all get hammered on like $2 Bud Lights. We go to... I drive everybody out to the movie theater, watch this movie Legion, which is basically like zombies. Just it's literally just a zombie assault for like two hours. It was awesome. Then we go to the local bowling alley. Cause that's pretty much all you have in 29 Palms is a movie theater and a bowling alley. All my buddies that are drinking, the deal I made with them is they have to pay for everything. So I get to go out and like watch a movie and bowl for free. And I just have to drive. They're all, like, by the time we make it to the bowling alley, they're, like, completely tanked, playing darts. And I played, like, ten games. I bowled, like, ten games by myself, just waiting on them to be ready to go. And then we all load up, get in the car, drive back to base. We drive through the front gate. The, the military police, like, check us in. We get, like, 20 feet past the gate. My buddy John's like, you got to pull over, man! I pull over, he just opens the door and starts yakking all over the side of the road to the point where the military police officer drives like, you know, another 50 feet down the road. He's like, you guys okay? I'm like, don't worry about it, sir. I got him. He's okay. And it's like, honestly, they don't care. As long as the guy driving's not drunk, that's all they care about. And I was stone cold sober. So they, uh, it was, it was a memorable night in my, uh, young military career. Shocker says World War Z pretty cool in terms of the zombies. I like the massive horde standpoint. Yeah, yeah that's that was what I was talking about. Those are the ones I just I didn't enjoy. I don't like like the hive mind zombie approach where they're working together. Like uh, I don't know. It's it's different. I can appreciate it. Not my thing. On that note, if you got any final comments, questions, we're already. 30 minutes over the hour, which is okay. We don't really stream for a dedicated amount of time. We're here to have fun, enjoy the conversation. Obviously, we got way off topic. Let's see, what do we got from Lana? Welcome to the show. Nice for you to join us. It's great to have you. The Walking Dead had mutant zombies in their last season. They can open doors, climb walls, remember looking. Those aren't zombies if they that's, have yeah, brains. Right, that's cognitive functions. You might as well just be combating 
Nazis at that point. Wasn't yeah. there one game that did like Nazi zombies or oh, something? Oh, yeah, definitely. Call I think of Duty. I may have played that one. Yeah. Anyway, thanks everyone for tuning in tonight. If you haven't already, we are a nonprofit organization. We stream because we love what we do and we want to support a nonprofit organization that is supporting military, veterans, patients with brain and spine injuries, as well as creating education and research that helps improve brain and spine health around the world. If you enjoy that mission, if you empathize and understand that mission, go ahead and scan the QR code at the top left corner. Uh, you can subscribe to us on YouTube at Brain Spine Group. You can become a member of our community for $4.99 a month. And what that does is help us continue doing what we're doing and contribute to all the nonprofit programs that improve brain and spine health around the world. If you don't want to subscribe on our YouTube channel, uh, you can also scan the QR code and go to our brand new website that we just la launched today. You can read more about what we do. And if you're compelled, go ahead and donate and uh, support what we do. Myself and Nordy are live every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern, that is. So don't miss us. Next week, we're talking about... What do we got on the topic? Oh! No idea. The... Uh, psychological effects of professional gaming right. uh interestingly you know gaming is something that captures people at a young age but when someone's identity as young as 13 14 15 years old where these you know great gamers uh develop perfect start developing a professional career and then by the time their professional career starts fading out in their 20s and 30s uh, that actually has a very detrimental impact on them and it's something that's not talked about enough. I think there's actually a huge lack of awareness around the psychological impacts of becoming a professional gamer at a young age and what that arc of your life looks like. So join us next week, Wednesday, 7 p.m. We're going to be talking about uh, the psychological impacts of professional gaming. Uh, so we hope you'll join us for that. It's going to be a fun one. There's lots to talk about. And, uh, you know, before you go, check out our new website. And uh, support the organization if the cause is compelling to you. Thank you so much to everybody tuning in. Nordy, any final thoughts? No final thoughts. Uh, appreciate everybody showing up tonight, watching the show. And any any ideas for shows, like we said before, let That's us know. True. That's you know, true. Give us an idea, something you want to talk about. We're happy to do it and get derailed like we did tonight. But we oh, will yeah. cover the topic. Uh, but it's, it's always a lot of fun. Topics serve as a launching point. They do not dictate where we're going to go. So anything you want to talk about, please, please, please tell we're us. Having we're having fun for a good, yeah. we're having fun for a good organization, a great chat or a great organization, um, great cause, but we're having fun doing it. And any input we get gladly welcomed. Absolutely. And if you don't get a chance to leave your note in the, uh, in the chat, you can go ahead and send us an email, check out our brand new website. You can find our email. You can contact us. And let us know what you think we should do for our, another episode in the future. So with that, Rad and Nordy are out for the night. We'll see you next week, 7 p.m.